Hello guys, tune you back again. This time we're going to do another review. We're going to review two cartridges. I'm going to we'll go through with the games on here on the first cartridge. I'll give you a quick overview of the games, uh, what they are, roughly what I think of them, and it'll be quick. And then we'll move on to the second cartridge, and then I'll tell you my overall thoughts of uh, the two cartridges together. So just to give you a bit of um, backstory, the Evercade is a console that plays old retro games, but you can buy it on physical hardware. Um, and you get physical cartridges as well, which is quite nice. I know there's a bit of controversy out there on the cartridges because they use flash memory in the cartridges. So basically, you've got the game stored on a flash chip and you record the um, save states and things like that to the uh, cartridge itself. I don't see why that is a problem, to be truthfully honest, because original arcade games uh, were on, you know, you could fl reflash um, arcade chips if the ROMs. You know went out you could reflash them so i i don't really see the problem plus if you look back at their um, new geo pocket the new geo pocket is flash memory as well and it's stored high scores on the cartridges so i don't see what the fuss is to be honest it works job done you can store your high scores on it and you can pass them between your handheld and your uh, your console if you wanted to which is quite nice so anyway that's out of the way Anyway, so this is the uh, Toplan um, Arcade 1, or it comes up as Toplan Arcade Collection 1. Doesn't say that on the box, mine, but it comes in here. The, the first collection comes with eight games, and each of the collections I'm going to show you tonight are £17.99 to buy. So they're cheap. You're talking just over £2 a game. Uh, on both cards, a little bit more. There's seven on the other cartridge, so maybe a little bit more, but roughly about two quid a game, which to be honest is a bit of a bargain. So let's get into it. For the first seven games on this one, so you've got Alcon, which is pretty much Slap Fight. you got um, Flying Shark, which is a vertical scrolling shmup. Uh, Guardian, which is a weird beat map I haven't played much. Snow Brothers, classic. Uh, Tiki Paki, which is a puzzle game, it's a bit of a weird one. Um, you've got uh, Tiger Heli, Vertical Shmup again, Truxton or Tatsujin, Vertical Shmup, and uh, Zero Wing. So, let's get into it. Um, first thing I get into, the, what I'm going to be doing here is I've got a display. I'm using Pixel Perfect. Reason for that is when you've got the vertical games, if you stretch it out to the original ratio, which is that, you do get a little bit of screen shimmer, as you do on other things. Normally, you've got... Um, like a filter that uh, filters the uneven pixels out essentially. But I'm going to just use Pixel Perfect because it eliminates a shimmer. So that's why my games are in a slight border. You don't have to have them that way. So let's play the first one. As they've added to the Evercade now, thank God, they've added uh, per game uh, button mapping. So we're going to map the buttons. So I'm going to be power up because the buttons are basically backwards. On Evercade style, I think they took the Nintendo sort of uh, route of button mapping for some reason, but so let's get into it. So, this is a classic arcade game which I loved a lot. I always knew it was a slap fight, but the original name is Alcon. I don't know why they changed it to slap fight, but anyway, it's slap fight. So, let's chuck a credit in here. What we're going to do, guys, if you don't know, if you're playing this game and you don't know it, if you don't shoot an enemy at the start, when you die, you get full weapons. Plus, the longer you can last without dying, basically you get boosted through the game and you get a massive points bonus as well. So, in some ways, doing this, it'll actually get you more points than actually get into that point in the game it, oops, in the game itself. So, basically, if I boost round by here and I keep going... And I keep dodging. Uh, if you get to the um, the water like fountain thing by there, uh, you will be boosted through the game. So we're gonna we're gonna cheat essentially by getting full weapons. I'm gonna knock that off. So this has got a weapon system a little bit similar to Gradius in some ways. You see along the bottom, you've got to collect the stars, and now uh, oh, there are two speed ups, and you can change your weapons by sides. There's a laser weapon, there's a normal firing shot, a homing shot, and a bomb shot. Uh, there are secrets in this game as well, depending on what type of firing you got. So there's certain things you can shoot in the backgrounds, um, depending on which weapon you've got at the time. 
Like if I'll shoot, I'll change to the shot. And it's it's a very this is a very basic shoot 'em up, but it, it is a classic. It does loop as well, infinitely as far as I know. I managed to get to the third loop, but getting past the third loop is uh, tricky, especially towards the end of the game. But I used to play this a lot back in the uh, in the arcades. Used to have it on the shop. I mean, used to beast this game all the time. I used to see it in a lot of places as well, but. You always knew what a slap fight. Uh, you do have a shield in this as well, which I'll try and get to a point where I can use the shield. The enemy firing in this is, is based on like a timer as well. So they all roughly fire at the same time. So if you keep an eye on the firing, you, you can know when to dodge them. I just missed my shield as well because I've just been stupid. But anyway, guys, that's um, that slap fight. I say this is a classic, and I love this game. And I, I would give this game probably a good eight or nine out of ten. It's really good fun when you get into it. So that's uh, game number one. So we'll go back to the menus. Like say so dimension, all these games have got save states as well, which is nice. So let's go back. So the next game is Flying Shark. Um, the other thing I will say with these, I think most of these are like the Western ROMs. I'm not sure if it was originally Slap Fight in Japan or, or Alcon in Japan, so I'm not entirely sure which ROM set that is. But I think all these are generally just the Western ROM sets, which is quite good in some ways because some of these games were like really difficult on the original Japanese releases, and then they got they got altered and made a little bit more fair, if you know what I mean. So we're going to be doing this on uh, everyone because I am actually. I was using a, um, a stick where I swapped the buttons around. So, Flying Shark. This is another two plan classic, one of their um, older games, but uh, still a good one. Save. So, this is this is a bit like slap fight in some ways. It's quite a it's quite a basic shoot 'em up, but it's uh, really good fun. There's one thing to mention as well, there's no auto fire on the um, Evercade, which is a little bit of a, a shit to be honest, but um, if you've got a joypad or a joystick of auto fire, it's definitely suggested to use for this. But you've got to have a low auto fire rate, because otherwise it just auto fires too fast and you can't, uh, you can only have so many bullets on screen essentially. But even this is quite a basic sort of, I don't know, almost like 1942 in some ways, except if you've got tanks in that as well, uh, game. It is it is a fun game and I do come back to this quite often. It can be pretty uh, brutal as well, by the way, as most of the uh, Topolan games can. I say what you'll notice as well, some games will stretch a bigger screen, uh, will have oop, the pixel perfect on a bigger screen or a smaller screen. That's just arcade too. Arcade monitors, uh, you could stretch the screens out, that's what most people did. Stretch the screens out to fit on, get all the, the game on screen. I remember buying uh, Prehistoric Isle, and because uh, I was using it on the CRT, uh, you couldn't stretch the screen out and you end up with a, a screen within a screen. Like on the arcade, you can stretch it out to make it full screen. You know, that's just the nature of arcade games, you can't really get around that. So as you can see, you're just basically in your by playing, going up shooting tanks, shooting planes, and getting to huge bosses and stuff. You do have bomb as well. Which is quite uh, handy. And it's just basically wave after wave of planes. Um, your weapon you can power up numerous times and it basically just gets wider and wider. But it's uh, it's tricky to keep your full shot. <laughs> Same a little bit of this as well, the enemy's shots are on a little bit of a timer in some ways. You can, as long as you know the timing difference between shots, you can sort of time movements a little bit. So anyway, that's Flying Shark guys. So let's go back, because I don't want to spend too long in each game, because reviewing two cartridges would be here forever. Uh, Guardian. This is a game I never played in the arcades, and I've only played a few times. It's a scroll long beam up by uh, Topland, quite an early game as you can see. 
your various planets to go through so you can work your way through it. Say so it is auto scrolling as well, unless when you punch. Push up to jump, which is a little bit weird for an arcade game, but you've got two buttons punch and kick. You can get power ups. Speed punch now, which is pretty much auto fire. It's not a bad little game. You have got a. Um, there's a lot of stuff to learn on this. Mind you, got to learn how to kill these bosses. So we got him. I'm not going very far, now, so I got to the forest level. It's quite basic looking graphics, but it does a job. Don't play too bad, even though you got up to jump. You got an energy pick up? Ah, dead. Let's give it another go. It seems quite fun. It's on the. Um, the oh, was it the um, Tiger Heli collection that them um, two did? It's on there as well. I don't think it's an unreleased game. Maybe an unreleased game in the West. Let's give it one more go. It's one of those ones where you've got to learn the enemies, how they fire the best way to deal with it. Oh, there's like two different enemies here. <laughs> so that's Guardian. Um, seems quite an interesting game. Uh, nothing amazing, but uh, seems like it might be worth a couple of plays. Might be worth getting into. I wouldn't mind finishing it, to be honest. Um, Snow Brothers. No Toplan Classic. It was everywhere back in the day. And you can, you can still go into like retro events and find a copy of this there. Like I say, we just still run to the backwards buttons. So you basically, in this one, you've got Nick and Tom. Uh, it's a one-screen platform game. And you can, um, when you shoot enemies, you roll them into a big snowball. And then you can push that snowball into other enemies. Like Bubble Bobble, you know, that, that type of game. You can get power-ups as well, they make you fire faster and run faster. And you get longer firing as well on the snowballs. Like you can see there, you can use the snowballs to roll faster on the levels as well, like they'll, the snowballs will pick you up. You can't jump down through the platforms in this, which would be very nice. I can't remember how many levels are on this game. It's probably something like 50. I can't remember the exact amount. It did two versions this game as well. There is a Snow Brothers 2, which is uh, it's a bit weird. Snow Brothers 2. It's got some. It's got the original two characters. Oops. It's got the original two characters. Plus you got like uh, characters look like a baby, which is it's really weird part two. But it's still quite fun. There was some pretty nice console versions of this game as well, like the Mega Drive's got a pretty nice version, but it's ridiculously expensive these days. And there's an NES version which is quite good as well. That probably goes for stupid money I expect as well. I think it'd be tricky getting some of these enemies depending on... Uh, you're actually not the fastest moving thing unless you get the speed power up. for him to come down here. Oh, I still missed him. Oh. 
Do with power ups really. Like if you could line, ooh, if you could line them up to be um, killed by the snowballs, you could do quite a bit, quite a bit of damage again, nice points, and end up getting the um, the extra items, in, which I'm failing to get at this moment in time. This also got a um, new a new release on like the Switch. I'm not sure if it came out on PS4 as well. It might have. Um, I haven't actually played the new release. It's got new graphics and stuff. I wouldn't mind a go of it. Right, so I got my uh, weapon power up, and I got my fast firing weapon power up. Now as well. I can shoot from a distance and super fast. Yeah, I haven't played the new one. It looks the graphics look interesting, put it that way. Checking power up something out. The speed power up is the really useful one. They say if you wait too long you get that pumpkin head thing that turns up and tries to kill you. Oh, I shouldn't have jumped up in. But anyway, guys, that's Snow Brothers. It is an arcade classic and a really fun game. I really like this game a lot. Say, so this is probably worth like an 8 or a 9 out of 10 as well, to be honest. And Flying Shark is probably, uh, probably about an 8 as well. Guardian 6, I haven't really played that enough, really, to give it any sort of a mark. But then, Tiki Paki. This is... A bit of an odd puzzle puzzle game which I haven't played a lot. Played a few times on MAME. Should have done my buttons actually because the buttons are reverse on you. Should take my auto fire off really. Right, so basically, you put the blocks down, and you've got to get strings. You got you got to get more than a string of four. I think it's at least five. Yeah, so at least five, and then it destroys those blocks, and then the um, the blocks then basically disappear, and the other ones drop down. So you can obviously set up uh, you can set set up drops to destroy the blocks underneath. So I suppose simple idea. But I ain't played it enough really to. Uh, get good at it. It's weird the thing on the top, it does automatically move back and forth as well. So if I drop it on there, if I drop it up there. Um let's have a go. I'll blow that up. And then I could I could do with a yellow really can I? So basically that's it, you just work your way through it, it is two players as well. As you've seen it gets faster and faster. I'm not sure how much of a hit this was in the arcades, I, I've I've never seen it in the arcades. Perhaps it did quite well in Japan, I don't know. I don't think there was any um, console conversions of it, as far as I'm aware. I don't know why Game Boy is springing to mind. Maybe maybe there was a Game Boy where that. I don't, I don't know. Um, screwed up. See, it's automatically moving that. Dead. So that's um, Tiki Baggy. It's, like I said, it's a game I've not really played much. I wouldn't want to rate it. I'd have to play it more and get used to it. Seems I like that. Doesn't seem like the best puzzle game in the world, to be honest, but seems like it might be fun if you want to get into it. 
Um, right then, so we've got the last three games now, three uh, classics basically. So you've got the original Tiger Heli. This was a game that used to be everywhere back in the day as well. All over the place this game was. I'm not sure with this version whether it's been, like, the helicopter's been sped up a little bit. Possibly. Seems a little bit faster than I remember. Evercade do sometimes do little fixes to games as well. They probably haven't sped it up, but I think the Western version may be a little bit faster. Because there's two versions on the um, collection, on the M2 collection they did, the Tiger Heli one. This is on there, and you can get a faster version on there as well. I say this is another of the really old games where um, firing is on a bit of a timer. So if you know the gaps in between the firing, you know when to move. That That is the way of getting quite good at this game. Like if you do it on here, you'll find now and now. And they all follow the same rhythm. This is a little secret for extra points. Like I say, no water fire again. I say the 8-bit though uh, wireless arcade stick would probably be quite good on the uh, Evercade. I say all these games work on the handhelds as well, not just the console, which I'm playing on now. So I used to like this game a lot, but uh, you'd never last that long on it. With the bombs as well, uh, as, as you notice, you can they can get hit by by the tanks, so you can just time it, and then you know they're going to fire again. And um, you can get extra, but you can get little sides that come on the side of the uh, helicopter as well. One fires to the side, and the other one fires forward, depending on the colour. And then you get a bomb pickup. I haven't seen one for ages. You got to wait for it. There it is. Like so, depending on the colour. I think white fires forward. We'll find out now. No, it's a bomb. So depending on which one of them you pick up, depending on what sort of uh, extra you can get. I think this was their first game as well. You can see where they started were a pretty good game. Especially for the year it came out, I think it was like 80, 85, something like that, I think it was on the title screen. So you got loads of uh, computer conversions and stuff back in the day. Yeah, I got a helicopter this time. And the music's changed. The front firing ones are probably the more useful, but uh, the side use ones are quite handy. As you'll see. I see this game will snipe you as well. There's no bullet ceiling. A lot of the Toplan games haven't got bullet ceilings. So what I mean by that is, is once an enemy gets down towards the bottom of the screen, they stop firing. A lot of bullet hell games do that. It's called like a bullet ceiling. So basically, once they're towards the bottom of the screen, like if I leave him on screen now, they'll keep firing. But like where they are now on a bullet hell game, they would stop. Well, on the on the on these games, you don't you don't get the luxury of a bullet ceiling, basically. <laughs> so that's Tiger Heli. That's an old classic. I I really like this game, and I'd have to give this like probably it's gonna be worth a seven-ish. It's quite a, it's an older game, mind, but uh, it is quite a solid shoot 'em up. I mean, solid in this you know it's good, well-made shoot 'em up. It does loop as well. Um, it's not the game's not actually that long either. <laughs> You can, once you get good at it, you can blast through it quite quickly. So, uh, next game then, we've got Truxton, which was known in the UK, or Tatsujin, which I've always known it from uh, Japan. Same again, do my buttons, because every Evercade's buttons are just arse backwards. At least now you can set buttons. Same again with this, no uh, autofire. Ah, this game really does need autofire. I say this did really well on the Mega Drive and the PC Engine. They're both really good conversions of the arcade. I'm going to use my autofire. 
so this this is these the, this has had um, a few um, releases. It's got released on PC, obviously the Evercade stuff as well. PC one had um, I think it's got a few extras, like maybe an extra soundtrack or the console soundtrack. I can't remember. This game got quite famous with T-shirts and stuff because of the bomb with the skull on it. Let's see if I can pause it. Oh, I can't pause it. Ah, try to pause it. Got the big skull on the bomb. I say this is uh, it's quite a brutal swap. This is. They did a sequel to this as well, called Tatsushi 2. Funny enough, or Jackson 2, um, and that's even better. They really went through with the pixel graphics on the uh, sequel. And I did um, some extra weapons as well. I really like part two as well, it's very good. These are uh, long games with long levels, mind. I think they take a fair amount of time to finish. Not if you're going to be finishing it uh, very easy, mind, to be honest. So that, that's basically a laser, a lock-on laser weapon, because then you know to fire. It won't fire. And then you've got this green weapon. But I would I would say in this game probably the, the standard weapon is the best because you get the spread shot on it. I say again, I think this is the um, the Western ROM. I think. So you don't hold me to that, I could be wrong. Got nice music on this game as well. The console versions had pretty much, I'd say almost like better music than the arcade one. Especially the PC Engine ones, it was really glass soundtrack for PC Engine. Same tune like, but um, just much better sounding. The Meg Drive one ain't no slouch either. Oh, that is a full power up, that is. That's my full weapon, basically. I don't think you can set difficulty with the Evercade stuff, like on the arcade, uh, you had dip switch settings. There is no dip switch settings on the um, on the Evercade, you just got to go with it. They seem to be set on the standard difficulty anyway. Type here, yep. So that's Truxton or Tatsujin. If I quit back, like if we go to here, there's a coin limit reset. Yeah, so you ain't, you ain't, you can't change any dip switches. You basically use what you got. I don't mind as long as you're set to the normal standard difficulty level. That's fine. I can live with that, you know. So, and the last game on this cartridge is uh, Zeroing. So. Do the same, I'll do my buttons. Um, Zero Ring is another uh, Toe Plan classic. Um, the arcade version, your proper arcade version, is terrible. Every time you, you kill something or shoot something, it flashes red. The entire screen flashes. Why the hell they thought that was a good idea? I have no idea. It pretty much makes the arcade version unplayable. But luckily enough, when it got released on the PC, they... they um, they took out the flash, and lucky enough, the Evercade version, they've taken out the flash as well. Which pretty much makes this game playable, though. I can't play the arcade one, it's it's dreadful. And the arcade board is like it as well. I played on the arcade board as well. Uh, this got a nice conversion on the Mega Drive and the PC Engine again. The Mega Drive soundtrack as well on this game is a phenomenal. It's way, it's way better than the arcade soundtrack. Technically, the PC Engine soundtrack 
be in um, Redbrook Audio. You know, technically it sounds the best, but uh, the Mega Drive soundtrack is where it's at. It's the same tunes as the arcade. It's just uh, it just sounds loads better. One uh, note about the PC Engine version, it's a little bit more, um, looks a bit more like the arcade version than the Mega Drive version, but you can't have as many bullets on screen, so you, so this firing doesn't fire so many bullets, it's about half the rate to be honest, but the Mega Drive version just fires loads like this one. Uh, there's three weapons, you've got the homing weapon, which is generally what I go for, uh, and you've got a laser weapon, and you've got the normal firing weapon you get. The other trick of this game is you can pick up smaller enemies and use them as shields. You can also use them to fire off at enemies. It can be a handy tactic later on in the game as well to give you a little bit of protection. I say the soundtrack to this game is very good. The arcade version is definitely better looking than the two home versions. A lot more of Power Lex. The other weapon you can pick up is that, and that is a bomb. Um, it will survive one or two hits, like that on the front of your ship. But once it's taken a few hits, it will blow up. Apparently this game was like a bit of a uh, test for um, new interns at uh, Toeplan. So loads of people designed different things for this game, which is probably why you ended up with the stupid red flashing all the time. So this game, I, I, I'm sure they probably meant to release it, but like I said, it was a bit of a sort of in-house work, I think, for a while. I'll get to this. Uh, each weapon as well can be powered up three times. This is a sub-boss, it's not the uh, full boss. So if you do get to check out the Meg Drive version with the all your base belong to us. And I'll use the bomb. That meme was everywhere when they came out on the Meg Drive. But anyway, that's uh, Zero Wing, guys, which is uh, a classic. Uh, I would give this probably 8 or 9 out of 10 as well, to be honest. There's a lot of really good shmups on the, these cartridges. Right, so what I'll do is I'll take the first cartridge out and I'll check the second cartridge in. So this is the second collection. Uh, this one's got seven games, not um, eight. So you know, just over two pound a game again, essentially. Obviously, you pay a little bit more each per title. Uh, this time you got Demon World, which just got slightly different things and just maps. You got uh, Fire Shark, you got Hellfire, Rally Bike, Twin Cobra, and you got Twin Hawk and Wardner. So let's go with Demon World first. will do my buttons while I'm here. I think I did him for this game anyway, to be honest. Right, so Demon World, this is quite a different game. This is basically not a scrolling platform game uh, where you fire at enemies. It's quite fun, actually. I did get a conversion to the PC Engine, which it ain't bad on CD, but it, it's not as nice as this. You can basically fire, you can double jump to get up higher places, and you've got your little guy running through the demon world with his uh, sunglasses on. You can also jump on the top of enemies, as you'll see in a minute, and kill them as well, which you will need to do in later levels. There are little bonuses around the place as well. Uh, you've got a couple of different weapons. You can get a bomb, a freeway shot. You can get a laser shot. You can get like a, like a like a boomerang shot, but it's not really a boomerang. And like that basically gives you auto fire. And you've got this missile shot. Um, there's my shots now. That's the. You can jump on the barrels on this, like uh, like you could in um, Sunset Riders. See if I can get boomerang shot. Oh no, I got bombs this time. Bombs are a little bit slower firing as you see. 
once you collect enough peas as well, I think you've got to collect three of them. You've got like a shield, you change colour. Got oh, freebie shot. Freebie shot is great, but it's not as powerful as the other weapons. But it is handy. So it's not a bad little game. It's quite fun. I quite like the arcade of this, to be honest. If I, if I get the P, there goes my third P. So now I've got a bit of a shield. You can't jump down platforms either on this. Ah, it's my P gone. <laughs> I thought I could jump up here and get him. The freeway is really handy for this bit. So it's a bit of a different game. It's quite a nice uh, game to have on here as well. It's a little, little bit different just playing shoot maps all the time. There are some secrets as well. Like secret there. I have no idea where all the secrets are in this game, mind. Say so the PC engine isn't as good as the arcade one. It's a little bit different as well, to be honest, the PC engine one. I think it's pretty much like its own game in some ways. Definitely the uh, freeway is super handy for that bit. This is two players as well, as you see the two player thing flashing. Let's see if I can get a different weapon to show you now. Oh. Ah, I should have carried on going. But anyway, guys, that's our game. That's uh, a pretty fun arcade game. I quite like it. Probably worth seven or eight, I would say. I, like I say, I haven't played a huge amount. I have played it a couple of times, but not a huge amount. I need to get into it, but it seems a fun game, to be honest. So, Fire Shark now, which is like an upgrade to Flying Shark. This is like the balls to the wall, sort of over the top weapon version of um, Flying Shark. This game is good as well, really good. Actually, I should have done my buttons. Let me go back. I'm so glad they've given you a, a per game button map. It's fantastic, guys. So there's a lot of games to get through on these two collections. Right, on this as well, to get a power up, you've got to collect three of the peas like you do in Demon World. When you get three of the peas, it will go to the next power level. I think there's three power levels on this game. Um, you've got this spread weapon, you've got like um, a laser weapon. As I die straight away. You've got a laser weapon, um, you've got a fire weapon that gets humongous and covers the entire screen. Same as this weapon will eventually cover the entire screen. And you've got that green sort of like focused type shot there. Which gets like really powerful. But you're know, more focused beam if you know what I mean. It is handy to have auto fire on this, but uh, you can't use the flame weapon with auto fire. <laughs> Good start, wasn't it? I can do. You got a bomb as well. Got a decent bomb. 
This is the weapon to have in this game. Once it powers up, it literally covers the entire screen and sweeps over the screen. This game did uh, had a couple of conversions back in the day as well. You, you can play it on the Mega Drive. The Mega Drive version is pretty good as well. Uh, except for it is set on the, the easier level. Basically, the second loop is set like an arcade difficulty. But uh, the Mega Drive one's well worth playing as well. So you get the idea. Basically, work your way through it, pick up your crazy weapons, use your bombs, and get through the game. And then try and get your weapons powered up to max. Which, like I said, they go insane when they're powered up to max. So, that's Fire Shark, guys. That's another another classic, to be honest. This has got to be another... Probably another 8 or 9 as well, to be honest. They, they are some really good games on this... Um, on these cartridges. Hellfire. Right. Hellfire is a horizontal scrolling shrub. Never crack out as well, to be honest. Got some nice conversions on the PC Engine and the uh, Mega Drive. The Mega Drive version, they did make it a little bit harder because in the Mega Drive one, you, you, when you die, you respawn. You don't uh, start off where you, where you died. So the Mega Drive version essentially is a bit harder than the arcade one. Unless it was that on the Japanese ROM, I don't know. So I'm going to use auto fire. So basically, you've got four different ways of firing from the start. You've got front firing, up and down firing, uh, oops, diagonal firing, but I've got auto fire on that button for some reason. Uh, back firing and diagonal firing. Oh, I forgot. Once you got a, I forgot. Once you got auto fire on this game, you've got to let go of it to um, change weapon. Weapon gets a bit stuck. It does. The arcade runs the same. Never a classic arcade game with really good music. Remember playing this in? Um, oh, I think where I was some some seaside resort when I first played it. I think it was Western Super May when I first seen this game. Oops. Got to go there. The idea here is to basically use your weapons. Try and destroy all you can, pick up power ups. Yeah, and I really like the arcade version of this. And then that was the only place I ever seen it until the Mega Drive version came out. I remember buying it from Japan, uh, and it was before I had my Mega Drive modded, and it, it came with one of those first time they did like a converter, which basically much just changed for well, the cartridge slot on the outside of the console, and the converters were like cheap and nasty. I remember after I bought it, then I'd send the converter back, because the converter broke. In the end, I think I'd send it back at the second converter, and in the end, I just saw a box and just cut the cartridge off. As before, like anyone was like really doing that, I knew you could do it. And you could play all the Japanese games and then it ended up like 60 years more, didn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's another, another classic by Toplan. Another one that did very well on the on the consoles, on the Meg, especially on the Mega Drive. On this one, you got it. <laughs> you got to move your firing around to uh, get on it. Like I say, it doesn't work too well with really fast auto fire. It's alright as long as you remember to. Uh, let go of fire when you're doing it. 
I'm sure the Mega Drive version basically changes the colour of the ship. You have to look that up when you change your weapon to the colour of the weapon to make it easier to know which weapon you got. I'm sure he does that. Anyway, that's that. Say so that's another good eight or nine as well, to be honest. It is a very good game. Pretty damn hard when you get into it. Right, rally bike. This is one I've not played much. Brake accelerate start coin. I've not played this one this one much, but it, it looks interesting. It's quite hard mind. Say it's one of the earlier type games as well. I think it's still a bit of a shoot 'em up. Well, I show you. I think you can get weapons. Could be lying about that. So I need to get into this one. I've only played it a few times, and it seems fun. Get a little bit faster you can pull back to get a bit slower which you might need in some areas and you can push forward to go a bit faster probably a bad idea going up there look at that fuel cheers pal see this is one i've not played much so i'm not very good at you can see. I think you only die once you run out of time. you got to learn which bikes move across and which don't, I think. train cars. Oh, no! <laughs> Almost out of gas as well. Up straight into the uh, petrol station. Or if you're American, the old gas station. Seems like quite a fun game. truck is there. <laughs> oh, come on. You've got to be nowhere near 30. So once you learn what bikes do what, I think you'll start getting better at it. Because it kind of seems to do the same behaviours. 24, that's terrible. So like I said, I, I couldn't really rate this because I haven't really played it enough. But it seems it seems quite fun. It's quite a nice distraction to have on the, this collection. Ooh, another classic. Sort of the sequel to um, Tiger Heli. We've got uh, Twin Cobra. Or Kurukuko Tiger, as it was called in uh, Kurukuko. I think it's something like Kurukuko or something. Tiger in uh, Japan. Or Kuruko Tiger, I used to call it. Probably slightly wrong. This is a great game. This is the Western ROM as well, because you move a bit faster. And I think you respawn where you die as well on this version. This would be the ROM. This would be the one I'd want to play anyway, to be honest. This game's got banging music as well. Also, got very nice conversions on the Mega Drive and the PC Engine. PC Engine went being a little bit different to the arcade with, with really good music. Another one that ended up with a classic soundtrack. 
I am going to put the auto fire in. Yeah, the um, helicopter I'm sure moves a little bit faster on the Western version, and it's a different colour to the Japanese one. I'm pretty sure the Japanese one's like a blue colour. The soundtrack to this game is very good as well. Like I say, it's, an, it's quite a number basic it's shoot map, but still super fun. Got some crazy weapons in this as well. I'm still not entirely sure which I prefer the best weapon. I used to go for the spread weapon, there's like a five way purple colour weapon, which is good, but it's, it's a bit low powered. But when you power up the main fire, it gets wider. And it's it is super powerful. There's like a four-way firing weapon as well. As you see, there's no bullet ceiling on this game either. So while they're at the bottom of the screen, they can still snipe it. So you can get this on the uh, M2 collection, Tiger Heavy collection as well. I haven't actually bought that, I have had a go with it, and it seems like it's probably the best version of that to play to be honest, but uh, I'll get one of the other weapons now. So if I grab that, it's like a multi-directional firing, which can be handy, but I, I don't like it much to be honest. I'd rather not that weapon. Mm. So you got the bombs as well. But put my mind to it, I'm not too bad at this. I can do I can if you get about three or four levels through it. Never game I believe loops as well continuously. I think most of these games do to be honest. See if I can get to the first boss. So you normally I go for that firing. This ends up like in a spread weapon, which can cover the entire screen, but like all spread weapons, it's not that powerful and it can take a long time to kill bosses with it. It's not ideal where you want it to be hanging around the bosses for ages. Handy for the levels though, as you can see wipe, you, it wipes out a lot of stuff. And you get you get like a five way shot version of it once you power it up as well. As you'll see on this boss it'll, it'll take ages to beat it. You gotta watch as well, they still chuck enemies at you while you're killing the bosses. Good game, Mrs. Mind. I've played this quite a bit. It's another one I gave it an 8 or a 9 as well. Topline made a lot of good games, I gotta, I gotta give them a. It'd be hard to rate rate them in sort of um, worst to best. You'd have to, I'd have to think about that quite a bit, I think. So basically, just carry on for the game. I can't remember exactly many levels. I think it's seven or seven or eight levels, and then it loops back around. I think that's how many it is. I, I could be wrong. Could be thinking of the PC Engine one, like I said, which is a little bit different in some ways. So that's that. So another classic. Down to the last two games. So we got uh, Twin Hog. <laughs> so this is another older game of theirs, but um, a little bit more basic, but uh, good fun nevertheless. Also got conversions to the Mega Drive and the PC Engine. <laughs> Thank you. 
Peace Engine CD, I think they were a cartridge, I think they were both actually. CD and a cartridge, I think it, it was just CD music. And then the Mega Drive version, I, I remember buying this when it first came out in Japan on the Mega Drive. It's a good game. You only fight tanks in this one though. The bomb's quite good, so when you use a bomb, you get all the planes come up in front of it. You get loads of firing. You can get power-ups as well, but you, you don't get multiple weapons. It's literally just a weapon you got, but you get more shots and wider. Bit of a, more of a basic type shoot map, but um, it's good though. I quite like the idea of calling in the you sort of your squadron and then uh, they go down in front of you then. Yeah, but we're doing this, you only fight tanks. See what if I was getting better now. If I was going to rate this game, I'd probably give it a 7, maybe. It's not as good as the other games, but it's, it's still not a bad shoot -em up it, it's, it's a bit basic, and it can be a bit long-winded. It's a little classical. I can use my uh, planes again. It's probably a really bad place to use them. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much... This is what happens through the entire game. Like I said, it's a little bit more of a basic game this one but fun so we'll cancel that and we'll go to the last game so now we got warden there was a mega drive version of this called warden special which is a bit of a, an upgrade on the arcade one and there's a um, famicom disk system version which is a little bit different to the arcade but still pretty decent i still like this game a lot in the arcades Used to be everywhere as well. Never won those games. It was all over the place. The Mega Drive version is really good, but it's it's not cheap these days. So basically, in this one, you got your little guy. You can jump and fire. And you've got to go and rescue the girl because she gets kidnapped. And uh, funny enough, uh, happens in a lot of games. And then um, you basically collect power-ups as you go along and get different weapons and stuff. And uh, you can jump and fire. And you get the more you power up, you can fire more multiple shots. This is a very, um, it's a very precise platformer. A route with lots of really precise jumps. Also, there's a little technique where you can do that underneath platforms. To get to places you shouldn't be able to get to. Like if I do that, you can actually get through the platform. That's pretty much a shield. Oh, I thought that was a bloody uh, a rope in. <laughs> I think it's just points up here. Should I try and go for it? Yeah, it is just points. I thought so. Anyway, let's just go for it now. Like I say, it's got some very precise platforming in this game. You want to collect all the, uh, the money in there as well, because there is a shop that you need. So you'll need your cash at the shop. Gotta watch you, you gotta make sure you uh jump accordingly. 
comes the first bit of the timing. I'm going to go down here, like that, to give me double firing. Right, first boss. You stay away from this guy. A lot of times you won't fire at him. You gotta watch sometimes they will shoot towards you. Yeah, there's a certain distance it is you can stay away from the stop with firing. Oh you little shit. You get the idea. You basically uh, work away through multiple levels, get power-ups and stuff, get in the shop, get weapons, and go for the entire game. Really fun game this is. I would give this an, probably a 9 out of 10 as well. It's a really good platform game. I still love loads in the arcade, and I really love the Mega Drive version. So what I'm going to do is go back to the start screen. This is not it. So, as in the EverDrive, if you double up the cartridges, you get something secret. So if you double this cartridge up, you get all the games on screen. And for doubling it up, you get the Mega Drive version of Twin Hawk. Gotta be honest, I could have done maybe another one of the arcade games, but you know, I'll take it. It would have been better to have like a, one of the older arcade games or something, just something random. Start that. You know, to be honest, the Mega Drive one's good, but if you've got the arcade one, you're probably never going to play it. <clears throat> you're going to want to play the arcade version. But as you can see, it's a pretty nice conversion in the arcade. It's not quite the same, the arcade's a little bit higher resolution. I'd probably say again, maybe the music's a little bit better on the Meg Drive version. It's, just, it's a nice freebie, I can't complain. Pretty much I think most of the Evercade cartridges, if you've got double cartridges, will unlock something secret. Which is quite nice. You can't permanently unlock it though, you need to put the two cartridges in to play it. As if you didn't know, the, the machine takes two cartridges at once. So yeah, so basically you got the Mega Drive version, same with the bombs. You go off and do the thing. As you can see, the Mega Drive is a pretty nice version of the arcade. A little bit easier, I would say. But anyway, let's go back to that. Let's sum up what you got on you. So, say the arcade collection one and two um, on the Evercade. <clears throat> would I suggest picking these up if you uh, like shoot maps and two plan games? I definitely would. This collection is really good, and literally for the price, you can get the two of them for like thirty six quid. And for thirty six quid, you're paying just over two pound a game. And that's a bargain, really. And you're getting a physical as well. So you're getting two physical cartridges and just over two quid each game. I gotta admit, ever, ever, you know, Evercade cartridges are really good value for money for what they are. You get a nice collection of games. I say there's some classics in here that I loved in the arcade. There's a few games that I ain't played much, and all right, there's one or two games that are maybe not that great. Maybe Tiki Paki is not great, you know. But maybe again, I need to get into it. You got your secret game as well, um, Twin Hawk. I say you can't fault whole plan games. It's a very nice set of cartridges, and I would definitely recommend them. Um, if, you, if you're into shmups or you're just into arcade games in general, I would definitely uh, pick these two cartridges up uh, well off the money. But be warned, auto fire is a bit of a, uh, a bit of a mess, so make sure you've got some controller that's got either got auto fire on it or um, got an arcade with uh, arcade stick with auto fire, because tapping that button in a lot of these games makes them tricky. 
especially for the amount of time you've got to play them. You know, it, it can still be done, but auto fire is definitely a recommendation if you can. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Oh, say this review probably took ages, but there you go. Say so that that's uh, the Toplan uh, Arcade, arcade uh, 1 and 2. It doesn't say collection on the on the boxes, but arcade uh, collection one and two, uh, with all the really nice games and um, and the freebie of checking them both in and getting to an oak. So yep, highly recommended. Hope you enjoyed the view and hang around to the end. And um, maybe we'll do some more ever evercade reviews. I got a few cartridges. The IREM cartridge might be well worth doing a review on. Cause that's uh, very nice indeed. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that, and I shall catch you in the next review. Bye now.